Good evening and welcome. You're watching the World 14.1 Tournament Finals. We're in New Brunswick, New Jersey. This is an Inside Pool production. I'm J.R. Calvert. Joining me in the booth is George Fells. Good evening, all. And we're here to watch a match between Torsten Homan of Germany versus Mike Davis of the USA. We hope you could catch at least one of our two semifinal matches. One, one was one for the books, the one that brought Thorsten here, as he rallied from 131 points down and went out in two innings with his third high run of the meet. He has all three. And as a result of that performance and uh, the fact that he's won this tournament before, I don't think, he, I don't think there's even a betting line on this game. Off the board. It doesn't mean that Mike Davis can't win. He played brilliantly in handing Mike Siegel his only loss of the week. And he can play some powerhouse straight, but we'll see how many openings he gets. Mike's going to examine the rack. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see his opening break. He's going to try and four rail the cue ball, bring the one and the five to the rail, and try and get them back into the stack. That'll be a textbook break. And in order to do what, what JR just described, you need to make contact with that corner ball at a point where it is exactly in line with the other four balls in its row. <clears throat> Any deviation from that will spread more balls than two. And I think that's Actually, what we've it, seen. It's a good opening break, though, and the three ball, his only real option here is the three ball, and from eight feet away, the first shot of the match. He'll probably approach it fearlessly, but that's the, his only open ball. I don't think he can get by the 11 to cut in the five. I actually think the five is there for him. Really? Well, it, it's close. He's talking himself into it right now. And we're... Happy to note that this match began only four hours and 25 minutes past the advertised time. I believe five hours. Five hours, excuse me. I'm still on central time here. Right? <coughs> five, five hours. Tidy. <laughs> well, the hurricane did kind of throw us a little bit here. If you're interested in pool technology, that's a hybrid cue that Thorsten is using. Part wood, part graphite. I believe the core is wood. And that's a cue that anybody can purchase. So is Mika Eminence for that matter. Although it's at a considerably higher price point. The Lucchese Hybrid. Probably shouldn't be giving air time to a competitor to predator, but well, it's a point of interest to our fans. Oh, he, I didn't know he could see that ball, and it looks like he's, he's going like to like this. He's going to pay for all. it too. He's going to wish he hadn't. All right, Mike Davis gets the first chance to do some scoring. I think he'd have been better off gunning the three ball. No scratch there. So Thorsten Homan uh, owes us a ball, and we'll see if Mike Mike Davis can get out to some sort of lead. We've all seen what Thorsten can do from behind, but <coughs> he's not behind yet. Mike is pretty well forced into using this 10 ball to break up the balls, and uh, as we said several times in our coverage, it is not a shot I'm fond of for a number of reasons. Your, your hit on the stack has to be precise for this to work. I don't like anything. The seven's so so small. I actually like getting position on the eight, on the on the other side. Soft rolling this ball. No, he, he, he did what I said, and it took a double kiss for him to get favorable position too. But he got kicked back from a 
Object ball rebounding off the rail, and that leaves him the eight in simplicity, and he should be off and running. Nice young man here. Doesn't play much straight pool outside of tournaments. He's a, he's a nine ball player. That's his reputation in Maryland. He's one of the best. He's done very well in prestigious nine ball competitions, too. Well, the eleven seven seemed to be his break balls. I'm wondering if he's going to. I think run one, into one of them right is going to. We ran into both. You saw you, you sold him short. <coughs> <laughs> he was more ambitious than that. Why take out only one when you can take out two? Well, he might be yeah, able to move the can, thirteen can, or, or, sa or save it just as it lies. It's not bad. It's just slightly above the top of the rack. Sure. Bun it, bun it down no more than a ball's width, I would say. Well, Mike can move the 13 down even a little bit yeah, further. That's exactly what it did. Perfect. Two, two and a half ball widths. I think he's going to already think about putting well, the 10 or the 14, 12? The yeah, the 14. Mm -hmm. Into the pocket here, maybe even the 12 eventually. No need to run into a second object ball anywhere on the table now. Not at all. Fine tournament, Charles. Our genial host, Charles Williams, is with us in the booth. Third place finisher. Valiant effort. Very valiant effort. See the pattern. 12, yeah, uh, 11, 10, 11, 4, 6. I, th I think even 6, 4. Yeah, well, that's better. It gets your cue ball moving toward the break ball rather than away from it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think a good run by Mike will let him settle in. I, yes, I think that's exactly what he needs to do. It's kind of like the baseball player who needs to hit a few line drives. Very nice. Got just enough angle on the six to pull back for straight in on the four. Perfect. Oh, 
Honestly, the only thing I'd do here is slide towards the 13. I really wouldn't look to go backward or forward or anything. Maybe two ball woods, not much more. Okay. Not too shabby. Not shabby at all, considering that he, he began with that high-risk break shot. Worked out ideally. So 14 to minus 1 for Mike Davis. And a good break shot in hand. I believe we have Mr. Ed Deska as our referee tonight. <coughs> I think that is correct. And he needs no help in racking the balls. Now I think that uh, I'm I'm hitting a hair low on this. Yeah. I, oh, I think so. I don't like high, and I think that. No, I th I think that's a. Uh, Three quarters of the way shot. Three quarters of the way down. Not real draw. Right. Meanwhile, he's got a pretty good makeable shot on the 12. That's, yeah, that's, that's as about as straight as he could ask for. He could draw back a few inches and play on the three if he wished. I think that would be what I'm looking to do. I want to scatter a whole bunch of yeah, options. Yeah, get the, the, get the balls open and let's run some. The only fallback there is that you're bussing it towards the rest of the crowd. Mm -hmm. It's the only setback. And and partially up table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Just a little wobble. That was, well, that, was, that ball made contact with the rail. One diamond out. Well, he missed it on the pro side, and then he missed it <laughs> on the pro side. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when I when I covered the the straight pool tournament in 2000 in New York City, I got friendly with Johnny Irvellino, and he told me I wouldn't play Ray Charles in here. I never seen so many balls in my life that missed that went in. And somehow or other, that made sense to me. <laughs> Almost sounds like Casey Stengel. Now, Ed, just for the trivia fans out there, was the individual that was in danger of going home with a 5-2 and two if Alex Pagelein did not win his last match. Right, where others would have come forward at 4-3. and three. Right. The fine man, excellent chess player, and the father of one of Maryland's better young players who scorned straight pool. <laughs> But Brian Deska is very highly regarded as a promising pool talent. Thank you. Just, uh, you know, hit mute if you want to eat something. All right. This button right here. Okay. Well, maybe while the balls are being re racked The middle one? This one? Yeah, this one here. Okay. Look at Ed getting into it. Squatting down. Well, yeah, I wish Mike would shoot so it doesn't hurt himself. That didn't look comfortable at all. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like something that would enrich his chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't think he has the six. It doesn't look like it. I don't think he's terribly pleased with this. He has the two, and, and I suppose he wouldn't trouble him to cut the five left. I think that's the only shot he has. Oh, I think he's got the two. Sitting there next to the nine. Okay. But this this makes more sense if he can stay there for the, the, the ball up the rail. There. Oh, the ten, I didn't think he could see it. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that changes everything. Now he got a side pocket break to come down and... Open up the two, nine, one, and four. Thank you very much for the burger, by the way. And there they go. 
Notice that the one ball could have kicked the four right up to where it would have fouled up everything, but there are so many factors in this game that can affect affect its outcome beyond what you do physically. But a favorable roll like he got on that last secondary break shot only indicates that he hit it at the proper speed. That's it. He might consider shooting the four here and opening up the six and twelve over on the right. I think that's what he's going to do. And I like coming out behind him two rails and hurt. trying to oh. hit just a six. Right. That way you know where the you know where the twelve will be, and it's your neck. Well, you, you, you have to make the object ball first, but he did his two rail route and knocked out the six cleanly. Torsten appreciates uh, that. Let's see how, how much he pays for that particular blunder. And Thorsten has been known to exact a heavy tax. So his Ren stands at 23, I guess. Thorsten still... Maybe you're correct. Thorsten is still minus one. Oh, well, actually, Thorsten is at one, or even right now. Well, he's even right now, but he began the racket minus one. Right. We'll go ahead and uh, get him into the positives here. How's that? be surprised if he doesn't take the up table ball here. I really think he's supposed to. It's a little funky to get all the way back on this side of the six, but he's shooting position at three balls. One distraction after the next. Thorsten's going to use the... The six is a key ball. I don't know why it would've, wouldn't have been equally practical to be, begin this run with the four. Yeah, well, the last four balls. Yeah, he's supposed to. Uh, of course, he chose what he chose. Balls as far apart, he can afford to come up a ball short or long on the six, really. Yeah. I, I try and pull this ball back. He will, with a little bit of inside draw to keep it from going wide and farther down table. Up table, excuse me. Sure. That's it, right there. All right, we've got us a score of 23 to 4. And I will be back with you in a few minutes. Looks like what we're going to have here, folks, is Torsten Homan trying to get started. Yeah, he's got a pretty good break shot. Admittingly, uh, this is not what Mike wanted to see, was him to relinquish the table where Torsten could get settled in. And he certainly has. Oh, look at this. Look at this. He's downtown. He needs a little bit of help here. Makeable balls in several places here. Now, the thing is, is that he's looking at it, trying to break out the rack. He still has several balls. See how much of the gap there is in between these balls? That's trouble. 
generally that means you're going to break this rack and it doesn't necessarily have to move away. So, you know, he's he's looking to see if he can get at anything and start to pluck away a couple of these balls before he goes crazy on it. But five to the nine. Oh, he's coming all the way down on the seven. I didn't think he was going to hit the nine. And what he could have done with the nine was maybe even move into those balls and use the 13 as an insurance shot. Now, they're, you know, with balls in the in pockets generally do not make good break shots. They're coming at the rack at a bad angle. You want balls that are probably with, you know, not in those little one diamond areas around the pockets. That kind that gives you more of a direct line into the stack generally. So looking at that, there's only one ball that I think that even really, really qualifies, and that's the seven ball. He's gonna shoot this ten ball away that might have made a good break shot because he could have hit the rail within that area that would have been the center two diamonds of the the rail. It would have been coming at that section off the rail into the into the stack. Pretty tough to explain, but just don't try and break the balls from a ball in a, that's that's almost hanging and you'll you'll most likely be fine. And you see that he said he's using the seven. He's planning on going into the stack here. Now he's going to hit the top side of the three, or the side to the left side, towards the fifteen ten. If he can hit this soft with follow and get on the bottom, he might be able to go out a little bit. But you can see he didn't want to blast that ball because he was just going to cut through a lot of things and go up table. Now this is where you look for dead balls, see if there's a way to work this, or if you can remove one of the balls and get some type of activity that will let you not have to re-break these balls. The last thing a straight pool player wants to do at this point is re-break these balls, but it's it looks pretty inevitable because of the gaps that were in there. Now he's he's trying to preserve the 15 as his break ball. Now he may look at this two ball as his secondary break ball. Let's see if he stops, takes the cue right into this stack. He's going to try and hit right between the four and the three. That'll let the four go up towards the side pocket. The three carry him off the 14 and down towards the bottom rail slightly. But moreover, the six will go shoot right at the eight and possibly drive the eight near the hole. So believe it or not, his next shot could be the eight ball here, folks. Thank you, George. George gave me a nod of approval there with my analysis. If you're looking for high runs, folks, don't ever break the balls without a plan on what shot you're going to shoot after. Poking and hoping does not lead to success in this game because they will make you pay for that theory. And a tax is pretty heavy when you're in a competition like this, trust me. Nobody wants to pay the tax that Mike Davis might be paying right now. Uh, Torsten Homan is, by all means, a mechanic of this game. He might be, out of the two of them, I think he's the, the more pure of a straight pole player. Pure. And as I say that, he has to shoot his, his break ball unless he makes a really hard shot on this three. And if you're wondering, that's why he's looking only at this three right now. <laughs> he's like, I hope it looks better if I look at it again. And I, you're seeing him shake his head. He had plans for this 15, but he has to bail. And he only has three balls 
to save it after this. So let's see what he comes up with. And I think his next shot has to be the three ball. Has to be. Because he's going to do something with the 14 after he makes the nine and actually manufacture the break ball and get position on it at the same time, which might be the hardest shot in the game. And the way to do that, he's going to swing underneath the nine, two rails, try and get almost straight in. Okay. He's got the wrong angle on the 14. And he can't move the four, and that's why you're seeing him scratch the back of his neck. And he's looking for a line where he wants to be. He's going to shoot this nine up in the corner, draw back. We're going to get a little action here. But trust me, he has to be absolutely perfect to nick the four at the right speed after pocketing the 14. He has to be in the right area and hit it with the right stroke, the right blend of speed and spin. Move it and pull up to the center of the table. And this is where it gets funky. The cue has to beat the 14 to the rail, or the four ball to the rail, or he doesn't end up with a break shot. Let's see where he got. Oh, this is trouble. He's, he's way too straight, folks. At this point here, he may be drawing and getting position, or just leaving both balls in the rack, which I doubt. But uh, I think he's going to get out of there. And take his chance on maybe nicking F4. Oh, what a great shot. He's left a cue in the rack. And the four is coming. It has come out. Great, great play. Great play. Now what he gets to do here is take the cue ball in the kitchen. He's going to go behind the head string here. The referee's eventually going to determine that it's racked. Or in the rack. That desk has rolled it down to him at this point. We're going to go ahead and give Torsten his fine 14 points there, making it 23-18. And we're going to take a look at what he's done here. Um, I, there's, it is very close that he can make this ball, but he is going to hit this with draw. He hits this with follow. It's bye-bye, baby. <laughs> wow. What do I know, huh? That wasn't even close. <laughs> Doesn't everybody play that ball that way? Well, he might have missed his stroke of hair, folks, trying to make that ball, and, and it happens. It happens. One shot he can really look at right now is he's looking at a dead ball, but it isn't there. I can tell you that. But the 15-14 has action. And if he can get up on top of it, he has a chance to blow this rack apart while making the combination. Other than that, his other choice is to pocket the six up in the upper right-hand corner. And maybe even spread the rack a tickle. You, you don't want to break the balls that go up into that upper corner as hard. Because you have to be so accurate. So a lot of times what you look to do when you... Shoot those six, like that six ball. If he was to get underneath the rack, roll forward here, he wouldn't blast it. He would hit it a little firm, but enough to move three or four balls and then go from there. Behold, I am redeemed. And you have returned. Yes, I wanted to uh, point out that uh, <clears throat> Thorsten's leaving himself in the jaws last time with the five ball for company back there. That's exactly why you might think twice about drawing the cue ball up to the head rail on your break shots. It's just too hard to control. It gets the ball spread, but what good is that if you have to if you get a shot you can't make? 
He may play for the 14 here. No, he may yeah. go for the 6 here. He's going getting on the 5 and then getting on the 6. Narrow window for the 6. Yeah, he does, but he has the 15 there that he can run into. But like I said, I think the 14 is going to go. I think he has. He yeah, has I think the 114 is good, but he can't get to the other side of the table with this 5 guy, or can he? Nah, he can pocket this 5 in the corner. But it and looks like. His uh, cue, uh, uh, yeah, he can play it as a stop shot. Sure. He, he sees the 14. Yeah. Actually, it looks like it has possibilities going in either direction. Sure, sure. I mean, he has to make a decision and commit to one, of mm -hmm. course. Right. But, uh, you know, I think the six is the ob obvious choice after he starts to think about the variables involved. I, I, I think he's enough to the left of straight in here that he can pull the cue ball over slightly and get a better look at the six. No, no. He's yeah, all right. He can he, see that? Yeah, he, he's all right. Okay. I wouldn't think he, it doesn't look like he can see this, uh, the part of the six that he needs from here. Now, now that I have this view, it looks better. Oh, he caught right. the 11. I was right. He couldn't see it. He couldn't see it. Or he just made a bad stroke, one or the other. But one or the other. I, I wasn't sure he had the the part of the object ball he needed to score there. He didn't leave anything. I don't think the 14 goes on the side. Well, he made four balls there, and he's pulled within one. And that gale you just heard was a sigh of relief from Mike Davis. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't as expensive of a miss as he thought it was. No, be. it only cost him a few balls. It could have been triple digits very quickly, folks. Uh, Eas easily. Mike Davis is, is, he's. I don't want to say he's lucky. He is happening to play one of the greatest known straight pole players of our time at his game for the championship. That's here. right. But, uh, you know, he just, he got a lucky break there, and it's what he does with it now that counts. Certainly dodged a bullet. Well, it's lock him up time. Put him right in between the 1 and 5, or 1 and 15. Ideally frozen to both. Well, he's given Torsten options to go off the 15 and back into the stack between the t <laughs> 10, 11, 15. See it? Yep. There's, you know, and if Torsten sees it, it could be all over for Mike because he'll get him in an up and down, and that's the last thing he wants to do. No, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want a safety battle with Torsten. He wants the first open shot. And there's a real art here, uh, this aspect of the game, beating your opponent to the first open shot. A lot of times, what Torsten's looking for right now why he's trying to go away from the shot we mentioned is he'd love to blow these balls apart and stick. Stick the cue ball uselessly at the back just like this i think he's he, uh, he left he, the, left he's, the he's one he left the nine is that the one or nine the one the one uh it's over the, over a ball and a fairly steep angle but uh, this was not what thorsten hoped to achieve it's actually a, a fairly tough shot given that he's over a ball being that he's over a ball, and there, there's no reward unless he goes back across without any contact. If he hits the bottom of the 15... He's go headed toward the other corner. Right. I think he's looking to go wide of the stack. There look he, at this, look he, at this. He hit the 15 just like you said, and he, he got the 11 to go 11. out by the side. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Otherwise, he would have his hands full here, but the 11 rolled ideally. And again, you, you should think of that as a reward for proper speed rather than how lucky he is. Sure. I'm going to take a quick break here, folks. I will be right back. All right. We'll trade, trade positions. I'll stay with this. Mike misses the 11 in the side that Providence granted him. So 
That's too bad. That's a missed opportunity there. The game <clears throat> bailed him out, and he said, no, thank you. Actually straightened up out of his stance that time pretty abruptly, probably because he knew it was a miss as soon as he hit it. And good news is he jumps fairly well for a white man. Notice that Thorsten's stance bends both knees. That's somewhat unusual at the pro level. Most pros keep one leg straight. I think that was misplayed. Maybe not catastrophically, but he didn't get what he wanted out of that. We can see this shot better from the other side. going for the corner pocket to our right. He's not crazy about it, but that's what he's going for. It's either that or the nine on the side. Mm, bullseye. This is the shot he was attempting to achieve last time. The, the, I believe that's the 12 ball, which will open up the four clustered balls. Thorsten intended to leave the two and three as he did, but I don't think he wanted the cue ball to run quite that far up the table. Looking now to see if the 14 goes by the two, and it does. That's what he may have to do, unless he wants to take the seven off the table. That's the only viable break shot right now. Or he could play a sequence which leaves the cue ball in the rack and, and take the side pocket break shot. But the fact that we have options to describe to you means that uh, <clears throat> the layout is very much in his favor. This is what he reaps as a result of leaving the two and three in place the last time he went into the cluster. This is a matter of proper speed. It looks like he landed right on a dime. Needs to get inside the seven ball to make it an efficient break shot. That is nearer the rail with the cue ball. And he can. Okay. See how much the piper charges Mike Davis for that miss after a very fortuitous roll. As we enter this rack, 23-22 in favor of Davis. That's about to change. And now the score moves to 31-23, Thorsten. That's more like it. A quick obsessive-compulsive swipe of the cue ball. 
This is a very precise process. You can see where Ed Deska has marked the table. That cue ball will go back where it was, right to the last millimeter. Somebody in the foreground with an obnoxious head of hair, but I suppose I can survive it. Okay, you'll get a good good shot of the, the cue ball action here as Thorson attempts to shimmy through the balls, and that's what he did. <clears throat> Well-deserved applause there. There are two tandems on the table that he's going to have to deal with. One of them is almost straight in. So it's really the 1 and 11 he'll concern himself with, and the rest can be picked off. Most pros don't try to break the, the, the whole stack open. There, are, there aren't many break shots that can produce that result. Most pros are happy to see half the rack come out. This just makes all the work easier. The 111 still needs to be solved. He, he wishes he had hit that a bit more firmly. Put the 11 someplace alongside the 1 rather than behind it. Hi, Johnny. Johnny Archer with us in the media room. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Good tournament for you, as usual. How's your boy, Johnny? My boy's better. Good. Good. How's your golf game? Don't play anymore. Don't play anymore? Mm -hmm. Running your room? How's your room doing? <coughs> Getting along? How's Kim? I tell him I said hi. Thorsten's moving nicely through these. It still has the 111 to solve. Johnny is, of course, owner, partner of a fine room in Marietta, Georgia, with well-known Kim Davenport from Modesto, California. I think the Thorsten will use the 13 to slide over on the proper side of the 1 and 11. No, he's going the other way. He's going to, I think, he may, well, looks at the 4 on the side and softly and come down here. Might use a hair of inside English here to hold the cue ball up off the rail. Whoa! Just right. And now the 13, 2, and 5 present a viable triangle for his break shot into the next frame. Well, it'll be the 13, then the 11, then the 2.
so far, Mike, Mike's side pocket gaff has only cost him one rack, but that's always been played so far. And I, I won't keep harping on this, but uh, even though all rolls, good and bad, come back to the speed of the cue ball, when you get a favorable roll like he did, and with that 11 ball popping up for the side, you've got to capitalize, especially against this level of competition. He had the bases loaded with nobody out there. Amazing. And Thorsten pushes towards the end rail and get off the side a little bit. That's just right. It's just fine. Uh, he, this, this could be severe punishment. For those of you who like that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Torsten's going to get another 14 here. And we're at 45, are we? 45 to 24. These last two racks, racks could have been Mike Davis's. Very easily. I know that he wishes he had that shot back. I'm sure. He knows how lucky he was to get it. Liberto's position while you wait concept to the nines. Thorson's follow through there indicated a little bit of uncertainty, but still split the wickets. Yeah, right away, I, I, I see the nines there, and it could use to be moved, but his only real, real, only real good shot is the four ball up in the corner. Or the side. Yeah, well... It depends on whether he wants to come across table one rail or no rails. Because there's certainly nothing on that side of the table. No, he should be attacking the the table from the left. The seven ball is a possibility. There's a combination. The two ball lets him move at least one or two of those scattered balls in the middle. They look like they form a, a Navy anchor right now. He would probably want to come with a flat ball right in between the three and the eight. That's that's the most productive. That leaves him safety valves on both sides. Yeah, he looks like he's electing for the 10-7. Mm-hmm. He tried to make a little bit of an angle there. That's why he drew it back that far. He wanted to see if that 10 would actually move a little bit, give him an angle. He wants to try and maneuver this rack. I kind of think he'll take the six off now, given that the nine is as close to the pocket as it is. I hope he didn't put too much right on that. Well, he still has the, uh, that the six or the two. It's the two. Two. And he can come off the rail and even play position for the 14 or the mm -hmm. 9. Mm -hmm. I would rail. say the 9 is going to start to reap more rewards mm -hmm. right away. So, notice how he headed for the center of the table, though. That's generally the most productive place to be. I think he'll go 2-9. I'm not sure there are that many options to it. If he does decide to break with the nine, the ideal ball to contact would be the eight ball. Pretty fair break shot coming off the table here, but it's too early to worry about that. The rest of the balls aren't open yet. This is one of those racks where you're looking for the, the ball you, you pick out that can open up the rack. You want one ball to be gone, two balls to be gone that open up this One rack. ball unlocks everything. Right. And I don't really see that ball right now. But I see the sequence of balls that are causing the others not to go. Well, his, his problems would be considerably reduced if the three ball were gone, but there's no way to get to it. The three eight is a modest possibility. Uh, he's not going to get to it off this shot, though. Mm-mm. 
if he takes the 11 out of play here, the, his next shot might well be the 313. Or the 14. Or the 14. Well, he's got the 11 partially blocking the pocket now. All right. He's looking at this 12-13. <laughs> I know he's going to. I don't, I, don't, I, don't think he, I don't think he has to. Doesn't the 12 go by the 13? No. He, oh, it doesn't? He, oh, okay. I don't think it does. And, and moreover, he's trying to figure out how to solve that 13 one. And I'm not sure that it's not dead in the lower right-hand corner where he's getting rid of the pocket to if 11. It, if it passes the 15, it's pretty close. And it looks like there's enough space between the balls that it could be made in any case. Now, where is this going? The 14, I suppose. All right, if he hits the 14 firmly enough to slide over into the 3, that's the ball that unlocks everything. Safety valve shots to both sides, then. Note how these remaining 7 balls look like the Navy's anchor. <laughs> I don't know why you should, but I noted it. <laughs> It won't be instructive. Well, he didn't. He didn't go to the three ball, and he would have had better results if he had. But this is still viable, though. <clears throat> the thirteen gets him the one. The one bumps out, bumps out a break shot for him. Either the three or the t the ten. Is it? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. I think he's going to work with the three. Afterwards, now if he does happen to leave everything. The eight is uh, so maybe it, underneath break shot. Maybe. Not the strongest possible option, unless you happen to favor that shot. Mike Siegel does. Danny Harriman likes it. I used to like it because I, I could hit it with high inside and run around underneath where yeah. there were no balls. Right, and, the, and you have the scattered object balls going in a different direction from the cue ball. Right. You swing around and you know there's one setting up at the side pocket for you. Two rail follow position here. I think what Thorsten will do is use the 8 to bump the 12 and skip over the 3. Leapfrog like that is not uncommon in good pattern play. Look at that. Good Great call, shot. George. George, you're Good genius. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two rails out of the corner off the three ball here is what I would recommend. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a chance to play the DiLoberto pattern here if he wants to leave the three for a key ball. Two rails off the three is what I would do. He's opted for something else. All right, so it's going to be one rail off the three. He'll float this straight up. <laughs> or he could, you're right, he comes straight up. Uh, once again, this is an example of what inside draw can do. He should pass right over the head spot, just like that. Outside draw would have sent him way to the right. Right hand draw in that case. And that makes it 59 to 24. Good look at the gallery. Looks like we have a few more fannies in seats. You can see Jonathan Smith there behind Ed Deska in the red shirt. Another very fine New York photographer. Does a lot of magazine editorial stuff, but he's he's worked for my publication. I suppose he's worked for yours too. I Cover, believe he covers has. covers pool events. Mm-hmm. One of America's better working stiff players. The title once ha once owned by Bob Vanover of Texas. Somebody told me he was watching the stream. Yes, he was. That's great. He's watching probably right now. Bob, if you're out there, hello. My regards, Bob. I used to see Bob at Chicago tournaments all the time. I got lucky enough. Uh, Bob invited me down, and I spent uh, some time with Bob. Really? Playing. Yeah. Well, he was still married to Myrtle when I first met him. That's over. Well, how, Kathy, how, how, is, how, how, Kathy is a great photographer. Kathy Vanover is uh, very I good. think I had heard that. I know this is a foolish prejudice, but I have a hard time taking any woman named Myrtle seriously. 
<laughs> what about Ethel? Ethel's fine. I, I I used to date a girl named Ethel. <laughs> I just don't understand why you'd name your daughter Myrtle. Particularly in an era where women were wearing girdles, the teasing would be merciless on our way up. <laughs> Torture. You bet. It's like naming your boy Sue. Or Cheryl. Or Alvin. <laughs> Alvin. <laughs> well, he was the most popular of the chipmunks. <laughs> that voice was actually the cousin of the famous playwright William Saroyan. Really? Yeah, it's Ross Bagdasarian. He wrote Come Out of My House. Hmm. He, he, he took up the name David Seville later in his career, but it's the same guy. More trivia for you, Alvin. <laughs> Alvin's still adding in our trivia. It doesn't have much to do with what Thorsten's doing, but I'll try to get get back to business. <laughs> and here's the here here he will manufacture a break shot use it. I I would think he's gonna manufacture a break shot using the three. I was wrong again. Well, I think he wants to get on the other side. Possibly. Then he can manufacture a break shot on the right hand side. Mm hmm. More reachable. He, well, he's gonna he's gonna bump a ball out here. Well, he just if the five ball looks to be his target. There we go. Right on the button. He really and the you know. when he gets to the seven ball, that will yield the one and thirteen balls. Sure. I think it's time to go get the six eleven. Oh, thank heaven for 611. <laughs> Once Thorsten gets back down here to the foot rail, the four ball is situated in a particularly useless position. <laughs> <laughs> All it's doing is taking up space and blocking a pocket. And, and wasting saying. his time, yes. Can't be used to obtain anything advantageous anywhere else on the table. And it, it's just... It's just a uh, spherical uh, thorn in his uh, side is what you're telling just us. Just a complete derelict. <laughs> <laughs> I would take the six off before coming in for the seven here. I don't see what, what advantage there is to leaving it up. He, I, I believe he's actually looking at it as, as his, key, his ball. key ball. His patterns down here are going to lead me to believe that he's going to clear this whole bottom and run up to the top, and he wants it. He and knows that if he gets along a line to the hole towards it, he can just draw the cue right towards the five. Mm, look how much harder he's made it for himself to get on the other side of the one on 13 balls here. Not that he can't do it, but he had a much easier path to it just stopping at the seven. He may shoot the 13 up in the corner. Oh, he's going to he's gonna knock him out. He well, may do one of my favorite shots here. Five, shoot the in, the five side. in the side. <laughs> <laughs> side pocket removal. <clears throat> That's right. Sounds like a grunge rock band. Side pocket removal. Side pocket removal. They they have a couple of gold albums. CDs More, nowadays. Sir. Sure. SPR's greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's looking pretty uh, dejected in his seat. But what else can oh, you I, look I, when I, you're I sitting here? I can't say watching? I can't say I blame him. His his opponent is piling up a score when he should not be at the table at all. Is he gonna get on the other side or tickle this five? I can't tell. All right. Other side. Other side. Two rail position out of the corner for the six. You're right about the six being the break the key ball and again we don't endorse Key balls beyond the side pocket line, but sometimes it's the only feasible thing to do. <clears throat> I'd rather not be straight in on this, and he's not. 
In fact, he has enough of an angle that he can draw back to the left side rail and out again. He may even elect to go up and down straight right at this. With inside English? No, just no. just plain flat, maybe a hair left. I like it. Maybe. Follow maybe. straight up and down. Well, <coughs> he got me again. Wow. <sighs> You know, I'm really getting tired of being right. I'm beginning to feel like Mike Davis. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not right, quite, that's folks. Right, that's not quite. Right. That's a three-rack penalty. <laughs> so far. So far. <clears throat> With the score expanding to 73 to 24. There, Torsten Homan. And I believe mm. if I was to shoot this one... You couldn't pay me any money to shoot follow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Might as well dive in with the piranhas. It'd be taking a subway, as you say. With a cut foot. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot. Not a great result. I think his only real... If he can see the one, that's fine. Otherwise, he'd have to shoot the 12 now. Yeah, it it that carom looks like it's kind of on, but I think well, he's he, got he the can one. cut it in. Yeah, but if he's got the one, that's that's easiest and uh, and still productive. He could he could go into the cluster right now if he wanted to off the Pick seven. Pick the ten. I think that's what we're going to see him doing. Yeah, good in between the ten and six, right straight ahead of the cue ball. Now that's where he wants to go. Hair of left English here. Okay, we'll remind our viewers that the combination of an elevated cue and side spin are very likely to make the cue ball curve, so you need to compensate for that in your plans. Thorsten went into the cluster exactly where we thought he would, so he came away with, with insurance balls. 14 and 12 both go in the lower right-hand <coughs> corner if you get on the proper side of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you're going to you're going to want to leave the four ball on the bottom row. We know this. Until the rest are open, yes. It's only the three balls in the the center there, the 13, 12 and 8 that uh, need to be repositioned. And he'll he probably go. He'll go from the three to the ten for sure here, or or the twelve. Twelve. 14. If he uses the twelve. He can break up those three balls I just listed. Twelve fourteen is next. And he preserves the angle he needed on the twelve to go into that nasty little triangle just above it. I think he's going to shoot gonna, to 14. Oh, okay. He's he does have the 12. Gonna, he has 12. He's gap. probably going to save the 9. So he doesn't want to move the 8 ball over too far. Now he's got a ball in front of his break ball. Well, he has three. He has at least two break balls now, the 8 and the 15, if the 9 can be moved. He could draw over into the 9 now if he wanted. He's going to go into it off the 4. Or maybe even get on the other side of it and play it cleanly back over here on the left. Or run or run into the 15. Running into the 15 is a good option. And that's what he did, but he didn't relocate it in a favorably. <coughs> 15, well, 15-9 goes, which is nice. Yeah. He could play the 13, six and, uh, 13 then the 6, and slide down here and, and play 15 or the 9 cleanly over here to the right. Oh, to the left. He could play the ball across from him into the side and come around for the 9 and 15. 
this is this is easiest. This this leads most directly to a beneficial next shot. I think he would pre would have preferred to be a little straighter on this. Well, I think he's going. He's going to follow the two. follow for the two or maybe even the eight. Well, he's going to go and get an angle on the two. And then he'll get an angle on the nine, which is a narrow window, and come back out again. No, I actually think he's going to run into the fifteen nine and use the ten as his insurance ball and his key ball at the same time. Ah. He's well, going to. I don't know if he do double duty. We'll here. see. I don't think he needs to run into balls. I don't think he needs to, but I think it's making sense for him to. In other words, he'll keep an angle upward on this too. Oh, look at this. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that was designed to produce. <coughs> it's it, like he's he wouldn't. Up the he eight. wouldn't. He wouldn't want the two ball from here. Well, like, if he gives up the giving up the eight at this juncture, will not move the fifteen or the nine. No, it will not. Uh, what do you have in mind, Thorsten? Oh, do tell. He's going to use the eight to bunt one of those balls off the other. Fifteen is your likely suspect here. Yeah, I think so. Hit the top of it. You can get position on the two end of fifteen. The two end of fifteen can and be your nine. key ball. Yeah. And the nine, if you decide that you're bailing on the nine, is your break ball. Mm -hmm. Well, once well. again, he hit it, but he didn't hit it in the right place. <coughs> Now I think he needs to feather this ball into the side and get in between those two balls and the rail, and this becomes trickier. He could make the ball on the side and bump the nine if he wished. And that's what he chose to do. He didn't have much of an angle going into that side pocket. And as we mentioned last night, if you want to determine whether a ball is playable to the side pocket, draw a line from the side pocket through the object ball back to the bottom rail. And if that line is wider than a diamond and a half from either corner pocket, go ahead and shoot it. If it's narrower than that, pass or play it in a corner. Right. Two rail follow position this time. Hurry up, cue ball. We hurry up. Just yeah. enough. Just barely enough. Maybe not even. There's something to be said for playing this ball for score and then playing into a safety, but I think Thorsten will go for the break shot as long as he thinks the angle is, will work. He got more out of that than I thought he would. Mm -hmm. The 13 goes cleanly and the 14 is his break ball. You can't ask for much better. I agree. He's looking to see if the, he can play this as a stop shot, and I think he can. That's a pinch. That's a <laughs> guess pin. what? That's a pinch shot. You know. What? Do you, guess what he's going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> I can name his tune in one note. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's going to charge more for that missed eleven ball. Is what he's going to do. <laughs> the tax just cut. Yeah, you know, he's we're in his we're in our fifth rack of tax of tax. Three nine eleven looks good to me here. I like getting the four out of the way, using the six and going up to get the ten ball, which is between the fourteen and the eleven. Yeah, I see it. It's a small little window, but you got a one eleven combo to save you. That that's why how Moscone would have played this. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm not joshing you. He, he looked for those shots like that, and the the ball you referred to, getting on that ball is a move I call cutting across midtown because the, the cue ball is no longer circling the balls. You're cutting diagonally through the, the layout, and this is how you find the balls that unlock the whole thing. If he is hard enough, he could send the ball above it into the top three balls. That's exactly what he did. And now everything goes. Everything goes. Everything has a hole. <clears throat> I would say that he's he's more than likely going to shoot the one ball next. Oh, yeah, I think so. But he's, you know, capable of doing anything he likes here. There's so many opportunities now. This level of competition, if you goof up, you pay the piper. Yeah. He will not be turned away. Now, I don't like running into this five very hard. I don't think he should run into any balls if he can avoid it. He can play the 11 with two rail position for the two, five, and eight. He could come up into them if he wanted to. Right, but I'd, I'd rather, I, I'd always prefer to see balls being made cleanly without running into second balls if, if the layout offers it. And this, that's what I said he sure. would do. And here he can <clears throat> reverse draw the eight and leave the five and two there cleanly, or he can drive them apart either way. I prefer the first way because it leaves balls in position. Mm -hmm. He's got a nasty. I hope he can see the nine here, because I don't think he can see the six. Or he can see the two. The two. Mm -hmm. He can see it. He can run two rails and pluck the five if he likes. That angle mm -hmm. is online. Yeah, that would be nice. You know, he doesn't want to run into the three because it moves both of his right, balls. Right. Right. And honestly, the three might go out of position and the fourteen at the same time. Oh, he can uh, see the. He nine. can see the nine, so I think he's going to bump the five, don't you? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, that that's as good as he could ask for. Two five fourteen seven. I got two five. Seven. Seven or three. Uh, or, yeah, two five seven three is viable too. Mm -hmm. I like. I even like this using the seven to start out with. But I really, you know. He's going to start with the three. But at least he's observing our, our rule of don't leave two break shots. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In fact, he didn't leave either one of them. He he's going to save the five. He's going to save the five. Unless he bumps the two here. I don't think he will. No. No, Probably he's two rail position for the seven on the side and be straight in on the two or just off straight in. He went... Two rails the way opposite what I was thinking, but it's still two rail position for the seven. Two rail position in the opposite direction for the uh, the side pocket near where the cue ball is now would have yielded him the same shot on the two that he's going to get. Yeah, what he's going to do here is just keep an angle on the two that's slightly that lets up him, table. Yeah, lets him stiff stiff it and walk the the ball without any rails. Now he's, he's going to go two rails uh -oh, for look position. At this, look at this, look at this. Now he's not going to go any rails for <coughs> position because he has to play the two. You mean he has to I play mean the five? I mean he has yeah. to play the five. He can't you're see right. the two. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. That's all right. This game yeah, will do it Wait a minute. George. Wait a minute. He's looking at it so he can. He's looking at it like it's a hanger. Well, and it was, too. Oh, well, look at that. And Torsten Homan gets into triple digits. I go with a little bit of draw. 
hit the top of the six. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go up and down again. That oh. had a little bit more action wow. than what I thought it was going to have. I uh, thought he was going down and up, but not that fast. 15-4 looks wired. I, I, I've never seen any players do that until this tournament and the European players. I don't know of any American players who play the break shot that way. I really think he's going to play this 15-4 and try and move the 15 just beyond the 8. Yeah, I think so, too. Or leave the 15 exactly where it is, and the 8, mm -hmm. you know, the eight is still pristine. He could go, he's going to play the 2 and, I guess, probably jostle at the uh, 12, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One has to wonder whether we're ready to watch uh, a run out. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not inconceivable to me. Well, he has the, yeah. the three highest runs. The three highest the runs of the tournament. He's run over 170 balls in this tournament before. And what's to stop him? Nothing that I see. The ball I thought he was going to run out all the way on Alex, but he stopped at a measly 140. <laughs> that's it? Uh, that's all you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just so the folks at home know, the TV table's cloth was changed two days ago. So we still have some... I thought it was just yesterday. Yesterday was the first day that this cloth was played on. So oh, okay. Yeah. And we had something to do with the reason that it was that the cloth was changed, right? The, the, the reason because we the, said we wanted fast cloth. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think okay. I, I, I won't negate it on the air, but <laughs> I, I know better. <laughs> no, I, I'm not quite sure. There's a reason to believe that that, that something did happen, but I'm not something, sure. Something something fell on the cloth, having to do with the overhead rigging or whatever. Alvin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alvin uh, was doing some things. And okay. It's all right, though. Everybody like, likes a nice, fast cloth. <coughs> Let's a good show go down. Notice how the seven and six balls go together ideally here. And a lot of pro players like to match up the balls in twos that way, as though they were playing cribbage, the pool form of cribbage, that is, not the card game. That's an ancient pool game where you have to make consecutive balls totaling 15. It's a good game to learn position play, though. Teaches you the value of two ball relationships. And he should polish this off with two stop shots. Might have to pinch this slightly to play it as a stop shot or go to the rail and out again or go three rails and out again. <laughs> That, that's when you know that you're really getting loose. Oh, yeah, whatever. Whatever. I mean, I'd, have, I'd have tried to pinch it into one of a, a rail a shot, but uh, this works too. You know, he'll go one rail here for sure. Yeah, I guess. Unless he wants to draw this one back three rails. Yeah, one will do. This is this barrel is 70 balls plus from the point of Mike Mike uh, Mike Davis's gaff. In fact, he's it's getting close, ready close to, to 80. I, I think it was something like 30 to 24 when he missed. And he's at 115 now, is it? Yeah, 115. 115 to 39. So, yeah. Oh, God, yes. Greenleaf yeah. did it innumerable times. Yeah. Uh, referee Carl Cantor. Carl Cantor was, Cantor was asking us if anybody had ever run, had 300 ball runs in tournaments with Moscone and Greenleaf own that. Greenleaf had a tournament where he averaged 62.5 balls an inning. He, <laughs> they were playing 125 point games then. He went 10-0 and 0, and of the 1,250 balls he made, he missed nine. 
I'm sure. I'm, I'm certain now that he's an alien from another planet. <laughs> he was about that pleasant to be around at times. He was about as pleasant as the real alien that jumps out of your chest and Sigourney Weaver has to help you. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting a little old for that, too. But, yes, the man did do remarkable things. Even, even <clears throat> in his cups, he was said to be a, a tremendous player. There are stories of his exhibitions where he could barely walk around the table, and yet he never missed a ball. Very sad. Very no, sad. Nobody uses drugs to that extreme just to get high. There's a monster unhappiness behind it, and I really don't know what he had to be so unhappy about. I guess we're destined not to know that. Our writer, Jake Dyer, has been preparing a, a has been planning a book on Greenleaf. I don't know how it's coming along. I, I really don't have any idea how commercial it would be. After all, the man's been dead for 61 years, and uh, you know, present-day people would not be likely to have heard of him unless they share our interest in this. Right. Jake is one of my favorite writers as mm, well. He's a terrific author. His book, Hustling Days. Hustler uh, Days. Hustling Days, yeah, that was good. Jersey Red was probably my favorite player. And uh, I thought that was a pretty fair portrayal. Yeah. I did not know he was Jewish. His, really? His real name was Breitkopf. Everybody knows him as Jack Bright, but it was B-R-E-I-T-K-O-P-F. He managed to get a 12 break shot or an 11. Right. All he has to do is negotiate the three. Three is the big guy. He's the problem. I might consider drawing straight back from the seven here and get the the uppermost balls. Or or for the the, the rail ball, either one. In fact the, the rail ball lets him play the eight and the eight gets him the thirteen and two. That's probably a better sequence right there. Well the run has reached a hundred, and that's what you hear the applause for. Now, Thorsten's fourth hundred ball run of these four four days. See, uh, I think he's trying to hit this eleven here. I think so too. Nice, well played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we agree out there. Saint one forty one in the chat, saying Jake Dyer is a real cool dude. I believe so. Good, yeah. good guy. Yes, indeedy. He has to be considering the four ball at this point. I think it's the logical ball to take care of the final three. Yeah, it's the logical ball to get him to the six and the thirteen. This is an, as you can tell by. In Thorsten's body position, this is not a comfortable shot to play. He hit it with and a lot I, of inside. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, when Thorsten goes into that pocket, most of the time he's sinking balls in the long rail side of the pocket. And sometimes his shots, as they begin, don't even look like they're going to clear the jaw. But that's the half of the pocket he's chosen. And that makes... That requires him to cut the balls just a slightly thinner, and th that in turn allows the cue ball a bit more freedom to roam where he wants it to. Can't ignore the importance of which half of the pocket you score in. I know it sounds like splitting hairs, but it's turned around an awful lot of games. And Thorsten misses a side pocket cut. And Mike's going to probably take a break before he comes to the table. If I, was, uh, if I were he, I certainly would. I certainly would, but that uh, Torsten's going to go ahead and he may want he may even want an emetic while he takes his break. Well, let's give him his nine balls while he's. Uh, All right, that was that was a that was a hundred plus that run. Thorsten's okay. fourth of the tournament. And if you look, he's actually a hundred balls ahead. A hundred balls ahead. He was he was behind when Mike missed that ball. Yeah, he was. 
All right, this is one way of separating the trotters from the pacers. How well do you come out of the chair after you've been sitting there a while? And we mean a while. A while. I don't know. What do you do? You go jog around the parking lot? The old timers used to say, find a shot that you can really gun in. Hit it harder than usual and your rhythm should come back to you. What I used to do is I, I used to love to come out and just let my stroke out exactly like that. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to let my stroke out. And I guess I never really categorized it as hitting it harder than I would normally do it, but mm -hmm. I did. That was so I agree with that that philosophy. I felt like a pitcher on the sidelines, you know. He's getting mm -hmm. tapped. Go go throw some balls. You bet. No more sliders come with the heat. <laughs> it is with the old number one. I would not well it's Mike's shot. I wonder if he's interested in playing the 15 and drawing back for the 5. Because that ploy does make some sense. Well, there are in attendance about, I'd say, 50, 60 folks in yeah, the stands. Yeah, about. Yeah. About. Diehard aficionados. Absolutely. We, we don't, this game does not pride itself on being a box office draw. In 2000... The tournament was basically sponsored by Blatt Brothers, which is New York's biggest billiard supply house. And uh, they had the gall to charge $70 to get in to see the finals. And, you know, maybe two dozen people came. And I said, wouldn't you rather charge $30 and get 100 people in here? Well, we were sold a bill of goods. You know, Barry Dubow had a lot to do with promoting that tournament. That's another... Another guy who does a good job of championing straight pool. Well, either way, I think uh, these matches here going out to the Internet, being mm -hmm. available for people all over the world who just have a computer. Yeah, I think that's great. We need to find a way to bring the game to more people. We've had some standing room only. Have you? Yeah, right here. Well, the room was packed for Thorsten's match against Alex, I understand, but um, there's there there there's seating available. There's room. We do understand that there's uh, some people that would be interested in DVDs for this match. Great. Not only will they be at youtube.com forward slash inside pool mag, but you can always email us at info at inside pool mag and say, hey, I'm interested in DVDs. Let us know which ones you're interested in, and that'll definitely help us make a decision. Obviously we understand there's going to be a big demand for this finals. I guess, oh uh, boy, I talked him into doing that and it turned out to be a miss. I asked, would you be interested in coming back for the five ball? Sure, George, why not? <laughs> <You're right. laughs> well, now you know why not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Mike Davis comes out of the chair with a shot he could drill, but he didn't drill it. All right. <laughs> well, Torsten, <laughs> he's He's off and running again. I think he's got a couple of decent choices for break balls. Of course, the first and foremost would be the 12. And any of these three balls left could be a key ball. I don't know what the ball count will be, but I think Mike Davis's morale has taken a heavy blow with that last miss. You don't want to miss your first ball after you've watched the guy pull a 100 on you. And uh, even if he gets back to the table, it's going to be a special challenge for him to be ready mentally. 
Alright, there's a good example of a side pocket key ball on which you must fall precisely, like this. He's a hair. He can pinch it. He's a, he can pinch it. He can also follow it with high left. He can do that too. Pinching oh, is he's, better. He's straight. Oh. Well, or he pinched it as though he were. All right. We all are certainly aware that 76 balls is not, well, it's less than 76. 62, 72. Ball, well, 62, 62 balls is not that big an obstacle to Thorsten Homan. We could yeah. be crowning our unrecognized champion in the next 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I tend to believe that somebody's got the wrong score, but then I think it's me. They say it's. They say 129. You're off, but you're off by a lot. I think 129 is right. I think they're three points below what they, what it should be. Here we go to the head rail and back out again. And it pays Nine off. Ball. It pays off. Eight ball. Well, the two and two and eight balls. I like the nine ball as much too, but I think the eight ball is the obvious choice. No, I think so. Yeah. I had given Torsten his points when he missed. Ah, uh, okay, off. okay. I'm trying to figure out how I was off. And I wanted to make sure that we had the point count. Thorsten went undefeated in round robin, didn't he? Let's take a look. I'm pretty sure we do have him undefeated oh, in the round no, robin. So that would mean he hasn't lost all week either. How are you going to beat him? Yeah, I don't know whether that's possible at this point, but he did go 7-0. 7-0. and Yes. Excellent chance of sailing through this field without a loss. And I, I truly believe that Mike Davis, he defeated, Mike Davis was in his original bracket. Is that right? Yeah, Mike went 6-1. and one. He's only lost to Thorsten. And he lost 100-64. Well, presumably that's not in the back of his mind right now. No. He has other things to consider. That's if he gets out of the chair. Dennis Hatch that managed was a, to get an, to 83. That was a nice manufacture he just made there. He drew back and pushed that seven out there. That was beautiful. That was wonderful. But I think by far the closest that anybody's come to beating Torsten was Alex Pagan. Alex, who had a, a lead of 131 balls. And you quoted that as being one of the best pull matches you had seen in how long? 40 years. 40 years, mm -hmm. only 40. 71, the year Miserac won his first U.S. Open title. I was there. Wow. Yeah. Remarkable game with Luther, Luther Lassiter. And this was at a point where Luther Lassiter was winning just about every major tournament there was to win. Hmm. In 67, he had a Novak Djokovic-type year where he won just about every tournament there was, and he netted himself about $13,000. But still, that, that's pretty good bucks at today's, you know, inflated at today's prices, I suppose. But Wimpy really didn't care much about titles. By his own admission, what he really cared about was the money. Sure. That's the shot that Thorsten missed before. That was a shot I really wanted to see him take because it's a side pocket. Side pocket removal. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Thorsten would, would enlighten people to my yeah, designs. Sure, sure. They come just before Stone Temple pilots in the lexicon <laughs> <laughs> alphabetically. <laughs> And Paul thought a bit before falling. 
decided it would. Neslahan Garel was in Torsten's corner. She's been hanging with Torsten all week. That's his girlfriend? I believe uh, on and off. I'm, oh, okay. I'm not quite sure. There were at one time, I thought. I don't know where what that is, but we had spoke earlier in Neslahan. She was uh, one of our cover girls about a year ago, October oh, 2010. Really? Great up-and-coming player. Oh, she, she, she plays, plays too? Nice. Uh -huh. I'd like to think that Megan Smith's game has improved. I certainly hope so. She has to hang around and listen to him talk night and day. He's said to be an extremely knowledgeable teacher, though, Mike is. Well, well it doesn't surprise me to hear. He really does have a great knowledge of the game. Obviously. Uh, Ava Mattia Lawrence worked with him, and she concluded he knows more about pool than anybody in the world. Well, that's pretty high praise. I, 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 don't, I don't know what it was she sought out his advice for, what specific aspects of the game, but at the time she sought him out, she was one of the higher-ranked women players, and she doesn't figure to win again. But she's still the best-liked of all of the women. Right. Well, I thought he was trying to set up for a simple one-railer. Now he's in trouble. Well, doesn't and the four go by the seven? Well, I don't think so. And then I uh, think we're looking at, what, two Sire. rails two rails with uh, high right? He uh, could be looking uh, at Or three-rail three, three rail draw. Three-rail draw. Or, he, yeah, he could play position for the four in the opposite side pocket, I guess. Now, if the four goes by the seven, he'll play for the seven. Okay. This math is really throwing me for a loop, George. I don't know what Den Dennis shows. What, 128 to... Well, he, he wouldn't have gone from 128 to 143. Was it 129? It was 129. Okay, so... 167. One, one ball beneath 12 times 14. That's right. Well, Dennis has the same thing, so I can't be all that wrong. No, we, we're on firm ground here. I'm going to put my shoe, my other shoe back on. All right. Stop counting on all my toes. It looks like this. One. Yeah, I think we got the math covered now. Here Down we go for another trip. Did, did the two get out there? No, but the six is hanging out, and it's not the worst shot in the world. No, not at all. It, it leads them to a nice break ball. Right, right there in between the fourteen and the nine. I guess that's, that's the ten. 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 Six ten would be. Very productive. Wouldn't be that bad. And he really doesn't have a lot of options from where he is now beyond the 6 and then the 10. Uh, you can see by Thorsten's cue in midair that he was applying modest body English to that. He didn't make it. No. No, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he's so uncertain. I didn't even see it sitting there. I thought he made it and, you know, he was f applying body English to coax it through. It's kind of hard to spot there. It really is. All right. Mike Davis faces the same middle challenge as he did the last time he missed. Well, I, I think don't think I don't think he's going to miss his first ball this time. I'll be honest. I go right up for that thirteen and look to smash those balls down. In the oh yeah, I, I think so. Nothing like breaking towards a ball that you might want. Might want to go up for that rail ball up table too. Get by there and don't go over the ball. Mm -hmm. This is okay. Mm. Not optimal, not what he wanted, but uh, it's it's he can deal with this. 
you know, if if things worse comes to worse, he can use the six ball as a break ball, allowing that the 14 is probably going to intercept it on the way in, and then the 14 ball will do the damage. Mm-hmm. That 15-1 looks wired on that. Yeah, it does. So or, or, well, it look, I don't know about wired. It looks like it can be thrown in. Yeah, I mean, he has to hit the side towards the eight ball. Mm-hmm. And he went just a hair too far to break with the 11 here. He can come down for the 14. The 14 6, excuse me. That's what he's looking at. Get along, little Dougie. You got the 10 ball now? No, it's not going to be a good break shot. I don't think he wants to do this, but it's an option. And since he's almost guaranteed the six, he can amp this ball and go straight up into the five. Into the three and five. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a free break shot. Sure. Don't want to hit the 14 on the way in, though. Well, he's not going to do it. No. And he's probably use the nine for two rail position on the 14. Now the three does go up in the corner. Or up you in know, the side. You know, in, I don't think that's... In desperate times, he could use the nine for a break shot, but I, I don't think he wants to do that. Yeah. But he does. Desperate times call for... Desperate measures. I'm not, I don't know if the three goes in the upper left corner. If it does, he could use it to push the one ball out. His choice is not sumptuous here. It's almost got to be the three ball up in the corner. He's looking to make sure it goes past the eight. It, he doesn't have a whole lot of clearance for this. And he should run right into the one. It looks like he will. And he's checking the, see if he's got a clear path uh, in the first place. The eight ball's a big distraction here. I think he made it. Very nice. Deserved a better reward. How is he on that 12 ball? He can, he can shoot that. Sure. Once again, I don't think it... I think he'd rather be somewhere where he could shoot the 5 and push the 12 out a little bit. I'm not sure I agree with this shot. Um, I think the one on the side would be more productive. Get him to the... Well, we'll see. Well, I think he's starting to look at the uh, other balls after this five ball. I think he's looking at the four and eight. But uh, he has no break he shot. He has no break shot except for the the 12 all the way over here on the left, and that's mediocre. The one is up pretty high as break shots go. The four ball should have come off before this. Oh. That was inferior. I, I. Well, he's pointing out where he meant to stop. It illustrates the concept that this game is all about where you can stop the cue ball, not where you send the object balls. Can he see the one? He can he see can it. See it? Oh, all right. It's a better break shot possibility than the 12, but uh, you've got
got to shoot at what's open. He can't even see the eight ball. No. Oh. No, he shortened his backstroke that time. Visibly. Visibly. And that's usually uh, a sign of pressure. Mike's posture is uh, telling me everything right now. Yeah. Game has been discouraging for him since rack five. Mm -hmm. I think we all like Mike. We like his game. He's simply losing to a better man here. That's the best way to put it right now is that the better player is winning. Mm -hmm. And it's it's nothing that, I know it sounds funny, but you as a player should always wish for the better player to win at some point in your life. Right. Because when it's you getting beat, when you're the better player, you don't like it so much. <laughs> well, your day will come. I, I honestly thought he was going to try two rail position that time and push the 12 out a little farther from the rail. But he apparently he's willing to take it as it is. I wonder if he's thinking about that side bracket break with the one ball. He must be. I, I mean, he could be looking at this four ball, or I mean, this twelve ball. Yeah. Well, if he goes twelve four, the, you know, the then the side pocket's all that's left for him. If he uh, if he goes one four, then he or four one, then he can preserve the twelve and its meager angle. Okay, and he probably wants to follow this shot just a bit for a... Well, maybe not. I think he can yeah, yeah, just yeah. low left for it and keep the same angle. Come right at the one. That angle would work. That would not work. Anything, you know, anything the other side of straight will work. That's fine. Uh, you can see that 90 degrees from the one ball's path into the side pocket is the top of the rack, so this is ideal. But yeah, well, this, this shot, you have to be careful not to catch the side of the top two balls. You want to go right into them as though you were breaking for a shorter game. The side of either of those two balls points you in a direction diagonally, and that can't be any good. He won't be hitting this shot soft. And Thorsten needs less than four racks here. Well, uh -huh. he, he went he went into the two balls a little bit too too he squarely. Uh -huh. Position while you wait. <laughs> <laughs> I actually once once this ball is made, I don't think he has many choices beyond the five. No, the five is his sole hope. So he has to hit this with high, maybe a hair of inside, mm. and come across. Yeah, we, we saw a good example there of uh, a, a bad roll due to cue ball speed. He hit the cue, he hit the, the stack exactly where you're supposed to. <clears throat> but he either did not apply the, he did either did not strike the, the cue ball in the optimal place or he did not hit it at optimal speed. He should have gotten a better scatter than this. He's lucky to have this. This particular pose he has now suggests, my God, what have I done? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's what he was thinking, but in his hand on the side of his head like that. I <laughs> <laughs> He's taking a look-see at what could be waiting for him. I think the five ball's waiting for him and not much else. But the five ball will allow him to break to separate the 13 and 15 if he wants to play it that way and he can go for the 11 and 13 excuse me and he can go from there oh i played a bank nice i nice. hope he came out far enough for the five ball in fact he might even take a look at the three nine five
I think he's looking to see if the 11 passes the 13. Go around here. Avoid the 15 ball. Get on the 11. Just like Good this. Shot. Just like this. George, what are you doing sitting here? You should be out there. <laughs> you know, you have to execute after you think. All I'm doing is the thinking. <laughs> Well, you you got to produce. It doesn't matter how noble your concepts are. you got to have a ball in a hole. If I could run balls as well as I run my gums. I'm surprised he's not taking the 11 ball here. Maybe he, he'd like the, he wants a 13 and save the 11. He wants a slight angle there. See if he can get that 13. Or, the or, or maybe stop on the 11 and shoot the 13 next without, a, without an insurance ball. Right. You wouldn't see Moscone do that. He wouldn't take on a secondary break shot without an insurance ball any more than he would without his pants. <laughs> yeah, well, here we go. High inside. High inside. Here we come. Round and round she goes. Where she stops, we know it won't be tied up. And he's got the six yeah. ball to split the wicket there. Well, he's got the eight and nine. Oh, I think the six is going to be his, his choice. That'll open up a lot. It'll only open up the seven and the ball under it. We don't have to worry about it now. No, we don't. There's more three rail position here if he takes the two. He may leave the two as a key ball. I'm not sure what he sees in the stack right now beyond the eight nine. He's got to get to the other side of it. Get position on the seven or t or uh, twelve. High right, working well. Come off the rail now. Okay. If the seven goes, that's the ball that opens up everything and and drives the three into break shot territory. Well, the five and you hit the eight. The five, yeah. You go into it. And you use your ten as the insurance ball. Mm-hmm. He caught the edge of the seven ball there, and he didn't intend to, and that's why this undesirable result came up. I think the 9-6 is probably fertile going the other way here over to the left. And he can get to it off the three, and the two gets him the three. It's, it could be worse. He, he would like to have missed the seven ball there with the cue ball. That, that kept him from breaking the balls more efficiently. He's shooting this like the eight goes. And and I, I don't think the eight goes. Well, he doesn't need it. The nine six will go. Okay. And he can push the eight over with the same shot. I agree. Or if he really wanted to, he could follow for the seven. That's less optimal, though. You want to stay above the balls, if possible. Well, I wasn't looking for him to do this, and I'm not sure why he did. I mean, the seven balls available to him, but I don't see any great advantage in shooting that before that combination shot. That was nicely done. Inside English once again coming to the four. I don't think he's on the right side of this combination to push the eight ball out anymore. I think it is. Uh, maybe, maybe it is. He, he soft rolls into it and the nine ball drops down here and the eight ball pushes over to the left. He's looking to see just how online this nine six tandem is. It looks like he may have to cut the nine a bit to make it go. He's actually going to control all four balls. All four two. balls. All four, because he has oh. to get position on this nine. The nine ball pushes the eight out into break shot territory. The six ball goes in the hole, and the cue ball and the nine ball have to find a nice relationship. I wouldn't be surprised to see a draw. He's going to cut this nine ball slightly up, maybe towards the first diamond. Mm-hmm. 
a little above the first diamond, I would say. He's looking for the point of aim now. And at that point of aim, the nine ball drives the eight ball out, but it's all a matter of touch. Yeah. Can't hit this very hard. And he, oh, didn't, he, he didn't, didn't get it. He didn't, didn't get the enough. eight ball out now. And he didn't get far enough for the eight ball to drive the nine ball out. So. Well, no, he can shoot the eight ball and get the nine. I'll come back across the table. See it? The nine is just barely uh, out. Oh, boy, yeah. At that close to the stack, I'm not sure how efficient it would be. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But and, it's and that that was not the break ball he had planned on. He planned to drive the eight out of there. It's extremely close to the rack, and it's just below the head spot. This, It's going to be tricky to rack the balls around it, actually. He went back too far over to the other side anyhow, so... If it's in the rack now, he gets the uh, the head spot shot. That was uninspired, the last few balls. Yeah, it really was. Uncharacteristic for Thorsten Holman, but with this big a lead, I'm sure he feels that the finish line is in view. Head does go. We'll rack these balls. No, it was in the rack. Ed Dusko will rack the balls routinely. And his, all, his, his alter ego will examine the and spot the <coughs> object ball. Because this is so far from the stack, I think you play this ball as, as the safety rather than pocketing it for score and then playing safe into sure. the closed stack. I agree with that. You'd like to leave the cue ball in the middle of the end rail now to make it hard for your opponent to go behind the stack. Are you kidding me? No. Well, okay. He, may, he tried to make a break shot out of it after all, and this is what happens when you don't catch the head ball properly. You go into the stack below the head ball, it's just too much weight to overcome, especially coming off a rail. Safety will be daunting here. He can get to the bottom rail below the balls, I suppose. What do we have? One fifty-two to thirty-three, then. I think. Well, that's what he did. If the four ball goes in that upper left corner, it barely goes. And it's not the kind of shot you want to be shooting from a hundred balls down. Looks like it's on its way. Going to hit the rail short of the pocket, and pocket speed did the rest. I think he could, should go 7-5 here without delay. I agree. Or maybe 7-12. I don't know that I'd do this. Going over that many balls, of course, I don't have 76 inches to work with. I, I'm going to go ahead and pocket the 10 and use the 14 to break out the balls. Well, yeah, maybe you can meet the challenge of going over that many balls. It, I saw that, too. You want to be able to put your hand on the table if you can.
That's two. That's three times he's raised his head. That's not what you want to see in a player you're pulling for. Well, he made it, and he had enough follow to go through the balls. Pretty unproductive, generally. It indicates he took on the cluster at the wrong point. He had the proper speed to get through the balls and get his cue ball clear, and he still does have open shots, but he was looking forward to a better scatter than that. That was nicely stroked over ball, all those balls. Got a little straighter on the sixth than he would have liked optimally. Seven clustered balls are a dismal proposition indeed. Seven balls available to break them with. Position window is a little bit, a little bit limited. Well, he's I think he's going to go for it now. Stroke it out of there. If he can run into the eight and move the cue ball back. He'll have the 15 and work with the rest of them. No, he ran into the 15. Well, that's all right. He, he brought the cue ball back into the clear. Sure. The 8 goes now, so does the 15. In fact, most of those balls will go in the lower right corner. Take the 6, Mike. It can't possibly help you. Okay, don't. I doubt he's. I'm going easy. I'm the easy stack. to get along with. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt he's going into the stack. No, use the fifteen. Fifteen uh, here. No break shot yet. I guess in a pinch you could use the five if you got close enough to it. Two balls of potential break shot. All right, we're back with you. Uh, you haven't missed a great deal following that missed break shot. Thorsten pocketed the first ball. Just a score here a second, folks. Dennis shows, I can't even see it. I got it. 163, is it? To 74. Uh, now you're set. Only been one foul this whole game. been a fairly decent played finals. Well, at least by one party. Mike is, uh, he's guilty of a few misses. I'll, I'll give yeah, him he, that. Yes, I, I, he's made it uh, extremely possible for Thorsten to clock a good run. And, you know, in, in the finals of a tournament like this, it is fitting that you should see 100 balls run. However obtained. Thorsten took a look to see if that one ball would go. I think it does. Didn't 
quite get there, but he can now. Maybe playing position for the nine ball here coming back the other way. Well, but he grazed it. Didn't mean to. Unfortunately, that doesn't count that he didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take it back. He wishes he could. Yes. He is a little bit funky here. Hey, hey, with, with the, the right touch, he can get use the 11 to get on the 15. He can also... He can shoot the ball up table, too, and come back and play position on the 6. He can try and or play the, the seven, Or the 7, or the 8. The Looking to see what his shot on the eight will be if he doesn't take it now, but that's what he's going to do. All right. And now he will almost surely get on the other side of the 15 off this 11. Wrong. <laughs> God, George, don't you get tired? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <again>. Very discouraging. <laughs> Going up table for that ball does get him a better the advantage of a better angle on the four. That's what he's looking at. Once the four goes, the five goes in the opposite corner. Not sure what all this study is about here. It's not that difficult from here. It actually ten it, four five. I, I would think is where he's going to go. I mean, maybe taking the ten in a side pocket. Not that I see the advantage to it. He's going. He'll use the six to break up the balls then. Yeah. Uh, this is this is really funky to me. Yeah, he's sending all the balls down below the rack here. I don't know why he chose this sequence or what, what, what potential he sees in it. I know I would have liked to have got the 15 first. One, Maybe two, he's make all three, the balls make all the balls, and now he, he'll be lucky to come out with a behind-the-rack break shot out of this. It's unusual to see three balls go in this late in the rack. You normally see that on a break shot. No, it was a secondary break shot. I didn't. I don't think he foresaw either num ball number two or ball number three going in on that. And those those extra balls are no great bonus because they deprive him of the chance to play, use them for position. And two points more on the score, but on the table, those two balls could have led to many more. And we'll see if he can preserve a break shot out of this. He's probably thinking about. The one ball is a break ball after it comes down to the rail here.
There it comes. Okay. Jump a little bit. Oh. Can't preserve it now unless he banks the nine, which it really isn't much of a shot. It's conceivable that he could cut the one in and get a break shot out of the nine. He'd have to manage the speed of all three balls extremely well. It, and I believe that would be a follow shot. Right, Not yeah, it would. You want the one ball to cross the nine and the nine to reach the rail while the cue ball is traveling up table. Bounce out again. And it's dicey, it really is. It really you, is. you need a, exactly the, the proper hit on the nine after contacting the one in the place you need to sink it. <laughs> Thank you, Alvin, for your input on that. I think we we discussed the possibilities of that. <laughs> this, in order for this to work, everything has to be exactly Speed perfect. Spin. Look at this. Yeah. Is he going to get or something nine, at least? Something, yes. He'd, he'd like the nine ball and the cue ball to cross each other's pass one more time. It's a coming off the rail break shot and. Uh, if he contacts the top two balls, there's some future to it. It's far from optimal, but it was about as good as he could hope for unless he caught a miracle and all three balls went perfectly into place. That he came out above the object ball and it's makeable, he should be happy with that, I guess. Now he's looking to see his angle of rebound off the rail. Imperative that he catch the top two balls here or hit the cue ball a little lower and see if he can get contact with the corner ball in the rack. But if he takes on either of the balls in between the one and the seven, that's likely to be where he stays. Pretty much. And he caught the one ball, but he didn't come off of it. Did he get a shot up in the corner? Uh, maybe. Maybe. And he's only partially over the ball, so that would work in his favor. 12-7. The carom doesn't look like it's high enough. It's hitting the bottom rail. No, and I don't think he can play that ball in the corner as a stop shot, which would give him the three. May have to play position for the five here and hope for the best. can see that ball, we can be sure he's going to gun it. Well, being that we're past 200 balls at the two and a half hour mark, I don't think anybody feels the need to call a uh, shot clock. It would be a little silly for the last rack and a half of the game. <laughs> but, you know, they wanted to do it on Siegel last night, and he, the, his opponent was closer to game than this. His opponent's now sitting in the chair. Yes, yeah, and, they, and they're learning how it feels, if he didn't know already. The score is actually very similar to that score that was... Yes, it is. Oh, nice boy. Nice shot. Uh, is he... Uh, that's uh, semi-stymy. I think the three ball can be made. I think. Hmm. What about the I don't, four eight? I don't think he can make the 14. I don't know how he's going to trigger the 4 8. He could kick bank, at bank it. the 3 ball into yeah, it, maybe? Bank the 3 right into it. He's looking at it. He sure is. Oh, he's playing the 3. Okay.
No, mm -hmm. he undercut that ball. That was predictable. That was really a pretty steep angle. That was really tough. He caught the top ball, but he caught it flush and uh, was held captive. All right. Mike, Mike Davis knows he's very unlikely to get many more turns at the table. He's got to produce here. Torsten Holman has him by 105 balls. Well, we need to see one more 100 ball run here if we're going to see a match. Eight ball treated him kindly there, but he also has the five. I wasn't looking for him to break the balls from there. You should be thinking eight, five, and then to the center of the table. Yeah, I want to look at that 14. Yeah, I think that's the ball he'll use. Maybe the one, six. Get this ball just before the exact center of the table. He wanted, wants to try and get it in the middle. Well, he's got the proper yeah. angle. He can get to just about any part of the table from here. Sure. Masconi would have gone 5, 7, 11 and then to the center of the table. Being because he was as precise as he was, he liked to pick off the stragglers first. one being six foot four comes in handy. Stretch comfortably for a shot like that. <laughs> now he has to deal with the four and six. It, it's like Roseanne, Rosanna, Danny used to say, it's always something. <laughs> well, uh, you know, he can get on top of them. He, he can, he get can underneath them. He can power draw into them from the seven here if he sees it. anything quite that histrionic, but it was available. He can bump them now. No, I, I like going to the two, getting up on the 11, and then taking the four. Okay. I think he's got a decent break shot in the 13. Or the 10. The 10. I don't hold much merit for the 12, but... 12's a little bit low. It's a little low for me. He looks like he's wanting, he's really trying to talk himself out of it. He, he doesn't. Did. He doesn't want to shoot it, but I think it's the right ball. He's going to go for the two first. May even use this as a break shot. No. All right. He would have liked to come up a bit higher. Now it's the one in the side and lose the 10 unless he decides to cut the 11 ball in. There's the measuring technique I was talking about. See how he put his cue over the ball there? Sure did. He was looking to measure the angle of deflection if he shoots it. He doesn't have to go into the six here, but he did. That's okay. Opens up the four for the, the, the pocket out of which he's taking balls now.
You can tell by the pace Mike is stalking the table at that this is not his normal game. That's actually not too bad. Well, Thir Thirteen come. needs to come off anyhow. It is going to come it's in. A, here. It's an inconvenient ball from which to get to the one or the ten, but it has to come off anyhow, and uh, certainly wants to save the six and fourteen balls. I don't know if the one goes by the ten here or not. Apparently not. But to point out the obvious, it's a little bit late to be worrying about those things. That should have been resolved before now. Exactly. If, it, if it goes, he plays off the, the t uh, twelve to the six and everything's fine. Okay. Nice that's little nudge. Fine, yeah, that's well, fine. Just the right speed and, and the accordant reward. Oh, here's what was something we haven't seen before. Left handed. Mark, Mike Davis going southpaw on us. Southpaw's had a good tournament here. Siegel, Steve Lipsky, Dave Dyer, Rodney Morris. Rodney Morris, Dennis Hatch. And that shot illustrates the value of two rail position for a side pocket clearance just seems to lead you right into the angle more advantageously than one. Sure does. Travel along that line to the pocket. Mm -hmm. Parallel above, below, or directly at. Okay, the last three balls of that run were world class, so let's see what he can put on. We need to build a total here. I don't know that he's going to get another inning at the table after this one, Depends, depending on whether he plays safety or misses. Why doesn't he just run the next nine racks and uh, settle it that way? In fact, it's only eight racks, exactly eight racks. Why doesn't he just run the eight racks and not worry about it? Your opponent never gets back to the table. You can't lose. That's a good way to look at it. If he gets two and a half more racks, he'll fulfill the, the score I prophesied. Yeah, he would. Be right on. He's hitting almost straight into the 13. A little bit on the bottom side. It'd be hard to avoid it. Ideal break shot. You have to go into the stack at the right point there. And oh, let, no. you let the cue ball loose. That's the result of a half-stroked ball. He did not stroke that ball with his usual conviction, and that's why he got the result he did. Well, Torsten Homan needs 21 balls. 
Yeah, I think we're going to crown a champion soon. I think they're going to adjust the score on this here. They're going to say 85, so I'll just say 85. One seventy nine is it to eighty five? That's what I see. Let me see what uh, unless there's been a second foul. Well oh there what just now, yeah. Just okay, now. yeah, two sixty four would be right then. Okay, not enough balls on the table for Thorsten to win with this rack, but I I don't see much interruption coming up in this. And even if there, even if there were, Mike Mike Davis does not appear ready, mentally ready to to uh, rally. Well, they they yeah. clumped up two places. Yeah, they sure did. He's lucky to have the seven. Six thirteen is viable though if he never needs it. Or he could use the two ball to go into those balls right after this. All he really has to move out of there is the six, eight. The other three balls all go to the lower right pocket. And in doing that, he would send a ball over close to where he could break the 14 off the 15 or the other way around. That's the 10 15, isn't it? Okay. That's a little better angle to go into the five balls over here to our right. Right in between the six and the one. Oh, well, he caught mm -hmm. the six full in the face. No real harm done, though. Now. Well, the 12 may go past that one. If the one goes. That is generally considered the optimal shot when you when you have more than two balls facing the same pocket. You want the inner balls first because it increases your cue ball options later on. He might use this eight to break the ten and fifteen apart. Nope. Well, he can use this ball to do that, and he has the one and thirteen for safety valves. Bit of low right here, unless he goes up table, there wouldn't be much point in doing that. None of, none of those three balls over to the left can pass the 10-15 anyhow. So the 10-15 must meet a grisly death right here and now. Nope. Mm. He'd, he'd have been better ad, better advised to take my what I do what I said. Well, he didn't see it that way. He's left with just a 13 or a one. That's right. If the 13 goes by the 9, it, it would be close if it did. He should have spun the cue ball there, come over there for the separate that tandem, and then he'd have had two insurance balls over here, and he could have gone merrily on his way. I don't know what he sees up table. I'm not sure the 13 passes the 9. Is he looking at that 4-6? God, what a thankless proposition. Seeing a little sloppy play from both contestants just in the last rack or two. He made it. And look at the speed at which he hit it, too. Mm hmm. Boy. Well, uh, that still leaves him with that two ball tandem to solve. I don't know if the, if the four goes past him. I guess the four does go past him, but it won't help him separate them. This is just a real messy, messy. Yeah, this has been played ball by ball. If he wanted to be adventurous about this, he'd play the nine with high left, skip past the four, mm -hmm. and uh, that would get him down to the 15. He's going to play the nine in this other pocket over to our right. 
Ooh, missed that very, very badly. He may have been trying to play it off as a, as a carom, but uh, if he was, he missed it, and if he wasn't, he missed it even worse. There's no way he can come out of that shot a hero. Mike Davis is laughing at him as the... <laughs> <laughs> So he know he knows why he was that casual about that shot. Doris didn't make anything that time. One ball. Oh, he made a couple. Couple so balls. Okay. Sure. You might as well be lighthearted when you're 94 balls behind. It, it's not going to help you to get intense. All right, Charles. Well, that was not desirable. Wanted to clip the four, I would think. I hope he can see the nine. Say. A nice shot he made. He made nice shot. He has no break shot, but that was a nice example of shot making. He's going to have to leave the 15 and uh, play a real break shot, I think. In fact, I'm not really sure what he's going to do with the three. He must go back and forth. I guess that makes some sense. I think he'd like to come out underneath this six rather than above it. He's going to hit this ball with draw. Anyway, well, he went up and bumped it into position. That's taking a chance he didn't necessarily have to take. But it'll get him towards the center of the table, and that's the only place of the, on the table that will be useful to him with the 15, 15 ball left. I don't think he can draw back off the 15 for a side pocket break shot on the six. If he were half again closer to the side rail, that would be a viable possibility. One rail and out again. One of the last break shots you ever want to see, but at least he's still at the table. Okay, and once again, where he contacts the rack is critical. He has to hit this shot with some velocity, too. Make one more facet to try and help him get loose off the stack, but because he can't be certain where he will contact the stack, this break shot is pretty much pot luck. If you contact the top two balls, you're coming back up table. Any lower than that, you have to hit the corner ball and glance off of it. He caught the right ball that time, and he got a hanger for a reward. Well, at least it I'm means his run can continue. It's, 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 it's not exactly a gold mine, but it's an, a, a makeable <laughs> shot. It's a playable line. <clears throat> and he, ca he came off the rack at the right point and got a shot he could make to continue his run. You really can't ask too much more of the shot. No, it's not much of a break shot to begin with. You it, can't. You know, it, to, in order to use this ball as a break ball, it's going to have to be either the three or the eight ball that does the damage because they're going to intercept the cue ball on its way into the stack unless he manages to get right in between the eight and the, uh, eight and the two. Or the eight and the six, is that? No, it's the eight and the two. If he can send the cue ball in between those two balls, he'll get a clean attack on the cluster. Well, he may be thinking about the five ball first. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what he's going to do. Not the worst idea in the world.
That this is better now. I don't know where the eight goes. It oh, looks I, th like I think it, could. it. I think it does. If not, he can draw back off the three. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Insurance ball with the six. And he can give that seven ball cluster a good smack. I think everybody's going for a ride here. Hmm. He didn't get much of a scatter at all. He got an, a bonus ball, but not much more. The good uh, news is seven he seven fourteen six. He's got the or seven ten six. He's got the fourteen ball he could use to break up that tandem and the two balls next to it. He might even be able to hit the top side of the thirteen into the one. Mm -hmm. Make the six combo, and have the thirteen break the eleven four. But he's oh, going to go this well, way. He went into the eleven ball first, which is which is what the the lie left him naturally. Sure. And the 13 ball would be acceptable as a break ball here. Mike could stand to pick up the pace a little bit. It would be not only more enjoyable for our viewers, but it would benefit his play. Well, he's going down and taking care of that, too, which I agree with. Yeah, I think that's right. He's I supposed to clear the six at some point here. I wonder what his strategy is for the 11 ball. Well, I think the 13 is going to be his break ball. He's going to use the 12 as his key ball. That's uh, The 11 ball is one more reason for leaving the six up there. Sure. You go down and get it, you want something easy on the way back. He's not going to get it off this ball. Well, I honestly think that he's uh, allowed to go 4-2 to the 11 or the 7. Well, well, he's he straight won. enough. He'll, he could even consider taking that 1 at some point here. What do you do with the cue ball here? Looks like he's going for draw. Okay. Looks like it's going to be 7, 11, 12, 1, I suppose. A transition from the 12 to the 1 is going to give him pause. Well. Unless he draws and takes it, draws back from this for the one ball now. It doesn't look like he's going to. You want to go just past straight in here so you can come back naturally. And in order to leave the 13, you can see that there is not a real relationship between the 12 and 1 balls that lets him get readily from one to the other. It's doable, but it could be improved upon by considerable. Now he can like use the one to get to the 12 off either one rail or two. I like two rails. Yeah, I, do I swing it. I do too. I swing it. Yep. Five o'clock. Don't forget to hit it. There we go. You hit it perfect. Hurry, you albino fool. Okay. Yeah, that was that was just ideal. This is a precisely the angle you'd like to have. You want to come back out about as far from the rail as he is now. Or maybe a little less. Okay. And Mike breaks 100. All right. Still 84 behind, but and his opponent with the cue in his hand. Cue in his hand. His opponent needs us to rack the balls, but he's at the table. He 
Your opponent cannot score from the chair. Or if he does, you should seek out other opponents. Ed Deska does not need anyone's approval for his racking work. Okay, Mike is looking to see where he's going to take the rack on. It's not a very sunny location there, but he doesn't have much choice. There's, I don't see any way for him to draw back firmly enough to get to the top two balls, and I don't know that it would be beneficial if he did. You hit this like Alan Hopkins would with a stroke designed to bounce the cue ball off the stack, just like that. And he had some left-hand draw on that one. That's inside draw. Pretty good result. Not bad. He gets to take care of the ball that would probably drive you nuts right out of yeah, the gate. Yeah, I won't have to harp on him. Go get it. He has to get it. So. <laughs> Now, he can run three rails, or he can run one. I think he'll run three. Seems to enjoy three-rail position. He has his choice here, seven, six, eight. Seven, Even six, the one eight, might be yeah. one of the ones, or a three. Well, he can't get to the one here. He may be able to get to the three. The and three, the three. Mess with those balls a little bit. Yeah, maybe send the eight ball down, to, or this, the uh, four ball down to do his work for him. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be the seven and probably probably the six next. Well, he has the 3 and or the 12. I think he's going to opt for the 3 because it's an obvious open shot. Okay. Looks like he's Mike asking for the, the ball, ball to, be to be cleaned. Cleaned. Somewhat unusual step, mid rack, but perfectly legal. Well, I believe the five is going to be in his sights here. Yeah, I think so, too. I'd and be going they, around for the 12. He won't be looking to touch any other ball. He may even just stay for the 11, but I'd like uh, the 12. The, I like the 12 better myself. It's got to come out of there. It opens up some of that right. center. It, it opens up the 14 for sure. It opens up the 10 for the bottom right pocket. It's just been a terrible influence. And now the evil thing is gone. <laughs> right. Down with purple. Down with purple. Well, he has the option of coming back two rails to the right with left hand spin or going up the table with right hand spin. But his destination should probably be the eight ball. I actually like the four ball. Do you? I like going two rails towards the four ball. But that's just me. He didn't want to bunt the eight ball. Didn't, yeah. didn't do a, a whole amount of harm by doing so. I think if he shoots the ten here, he's going to run into the six, and the six is nicely situated now. The one goes by the four on the side. That would be something for him to think about. Not sure it does. It does, and I like it because it lets him corral the ten a little bit. Okay. He's going to have to nudge a ball here. No, these balls could be made cleanly. 
Well, I mean, with the one, if he makes it's inconvenient one. that he's on the rail now because he only has the top of the cue ball to work with. I th if the one goes, I think I would soft roll the one. He, he doesn't want. Yeah, he doesn't want to shoot this ten, but it sure looks like he's going to. Yep. So now he's going to nudge the six. I don't see how he can get get around that. Well, he's saying that so this one is a better bridge shot than one, the uh, six. I will have the one after I move. I didn't yeah. move the six, so he's all right. Uh, we apologize, folks. <laughs> it looked like the angle red led right into that ball. He has no real bargains here. If he doesn't want to take the six out, he'd have to shoot the eight ball or the four. The f but the four will take the six out anyhow, so he might as well shoot the six. It's a strange looking shot. <laughs> That's a nine ball stroke. He hit it like it was double parked. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He had right hand, right hand draw on that and he had a hell of a lot of it. Amazing. Just, uh, I think well, he, he needed to hit a shot like that just to kind of. Uh, oh, yeah, it's good to let your stroke out when you're in a position like this. It, can help you get back to normal now. Mentally, he uh, just think of how solid he has to feel now. Mm-hmm. He got much, that much, hit much, one. Much better. Now he's going to limp over here for the 8, and the 8 gets him the 12, and that's where you want to be. Just above center here. That's it. Good stroke. Don't freeze on the rail with it now. Well, he came off about a quarter inch. Not too bad. He's going to have to soft roll in the ball on the side. He might want to check the position one ball higher than where the eight now is now just to make sure he lands precisely on the 12 because he's not going to have much of the cue ball to work with. Mm -mm. He'll end up being jacked up if he doesn't watch. Uh, he, well, got, he, he got back off the rail about the distance that he was off to begin with. Maybe a little more, but it's enough that he can uh, jack up if he has to and stop the cue ball on this. I'd, I'd like to see him bring it back a ball's width or so. Yeah, well, Just a little pinch draw. Well, I think that's what he's going to strive for. I don't see going up to the end rail and coming back down. There, there, it, there is. it is, right there. Very nice. So yeah. Mike Davis closes the gap to five racks. Somebody forgot to tell him that this was uh, on its way. Yeah. He needs two more, two more points to reach what the score I prophesied. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, the fact is it's a nice start he should take heart that he's still at the table and and playing reasonably well and, and obtaining advantageous position he's had some trouble with his break shots so he, he was gonna he might want to check double check the angle of entry into the stack here he's looking at it now he is. That's exactly what he's doing right now. He's not looking at the rack, folks. He knows the referee's going to try and give him a fair rack. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's hope so. But, uh, yeah, he's looking at the end of the rack. He looks like he's going into the top side of the 14, which is ball going to be on the bottom rail real quick. And here it comes. There it goes. Let's get some company down there. <laughs> well, the 11 ball is practically all he has. He's got two half ass combinations on the 11. I think uh, he could have ended up with something there, but it's you would think so. I actually, hit that ball just a little bit too hard. Well, this is the weird. 11 and the one would have been a the 11 and the cue ball would have been a much better match set with a little less cue ball speed. It only proves that rolls unlucky, unlucky come back to cue ball speed. He can slice that ball in nicely. Well, if he's going to play along with your game, George, he has to miss this next ball. I suppose so. I'd be willing to see him pass my prophecy. It's fine with me. Okay. Well, he's then. got three balls on the right side rail to worry about. Okay, we'll let him. Uh, Continue his run. Sure, he can surpass what I predicted for him. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that this is going to be a lot closer than what either of us had predicted. 
Well, you were predicting a close game anyhow. Yeah. I was thinking more in the 170s. I think Mike is going to get into the 180s with this run alone. You think I, he's going to run 100 balls here? I think he's going to run 100. Okay. Uh, he better. You know hey, I'll say he better. You know why? Why? Because it's 2 in the morning. Ah. Oh, Jesus. Yes, it is. It's, it's coming up on 3. Well, it's it's perfect time for a pool player to pay, play perfect pool. Yeah, that's right. You should be used to it by now. Up into these Up, one. These, uh, he didn't oh, want him to come past the 6 and hit the 10. It's no. okay. He still has the 15 ball up table or the, or the 8 ball to cut if he chooses, but uh, he didn't get the work done. If he had come into the 10 there, everything would have been fine. I think he's gonna. Have, he has the six ball here. Mm-hmm. Be able to go down for the seven. I, I think I think about sending the nine up table to get position on the six, but your way is okay too. Come on, oh, oh. Oh, but you got to make the six first. Uh, <laughs> well, all right. If if Thorsten can solve this four ten on the right side rail, I think that will be the last shooting Mike Davis does tonight. I believe that's that's a correct statement. I believe right now what we're looking at is Torsten has to pick up, what, nine balls here and then three. Four, seven, nine, and then three more from the next rack. I think the eight ball would take him over there. Well, the eight ball doesn't go by the six. In fact, the six ball interferes with just about anything he wants to make in the right lower corner. That's what he's looking at now. Apparently the two ball goes. He can use, he can just pick the 10 off. Yeah, he can, uh, off the 15, in a very advantageous place. And he can use his 15 roll up four or five inches. Or play the eight and run the four out of there. Eight goes by the six now, I think. Yeah, the eight goes by the six. But, you know, you don't need why bump go running into balls if you don't need to if he plays the 10 and brings the cue ball out of there everything's fine well, he went to the eight and did what I said mm -hmm. I don't think I'd leave the 10 as a key ball Thorsten and I saw eye to eye. I wonder what break shot he wants here. Here comes the six off the table. There's not a very attractive three ball package left here. Mm -mm. Even only needing three, this looks pretty horrible. I don't know what he wants to what he's going to use to break with here. Obviously, the five's coming off now, but neither of the two remaining balls are particularly good. I like the stripe ball, the twelve. Mm -hmm. I think it's up kind of high. Well, I think he's going given to how a close. Side it, given how, oh, well, that well, that's different. Well, I don't see how he's going to get on the right side of that 
that's yeah. the stripe now. Maybe he can. He has a he has a modest angle on the four. He might be able to get over there. He's going to play this break shot the conventional way. He can't hit it very hard or he'll miss the stack altogether. We'll see what he does. He needs to contact the right hand of the top two balls. Yeah. And we're playing for three now. I would only want to tickle this a little bit. That's all he can do. So it's 123 to 97. 197. 197. And with the making of this break shot, we'll be playing for two. He needs to run into the one. Just like that. No, nothing came mm -hmm. out. Nothing came out. The 14 ball starts to drop lower than that. Look, the three ball looks like it's dead. He may have another kick in here. Yeah. That's the first thing I saw. That's the old Moscone shot. Yeah. Well, the Moscone shot isn't quite as obvious as this. No, it isn't, because there's a ball in front that clears yeah, out first. Right. He's going to nick the three and run up table. Yeah, he's going to play safe. Discretion is the better part of Val. I just don't leave it dead. Okay. Seven doesn't look like it really has action here. No. This is a, an unpretty pickle. He's going to obviously going to try and feather the seven for a safety. It doesn't have much choice. I suppose he could play the one pocket safety, graze the one and come to the bottom rail, but that's pretty passive. He's going to have to come with something unique to stay in the game. Yeah, exactly. Torsten technically needs to. Not technically. <laughs> <laughs> well, what nothing we see in the nothing background Nothing technical is about it. Uh, well, yeah, they haven't added his points yet, but right. we, we know he's playing for two. We know he's playing for two. And Mike is looking to see if the four might go off the three. I don't think it does. But we can't tell from here. This is one of those hope against hope shots. He might as well. I think he's going to go for this. He doesn't have much to lose with his opponent in the two hole. Okay. I don't see much future in this. You know, if you're Torsten Homan, you would jump out of your chair Absolutely. as fast as he just did. Folks, get ready for a big round of applause. Now, don't go anywhere. We're, we have been informed by Charlie Williams that we're going to have a slight awards ceremony. Okay. We're at that we're going to carry. Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna, air it. Are we gonna sp we're gonna stream that too. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna stream it. Whoa. Well, we're gonna be here a little while longer. <laughs> well. I can, say that, I can say that with confidence. How much longer <laughs> remains to be seen. But a little bit for sure. That's an unusual miss for Thorsten. Any miss is unusual for Thorsten. But especially in the two hole. Well, Mike is... Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's stymied. He thought that he wasn't getting back to the table. I didn't, so did I. He's looking at that 11 down the corner. It's not exactly a sumptuous choice that he has. Oh, no. 
undercut. And there's no escape this time. This time it, it's going to take a miracle. I don't think there are any are forthcoming. We know that Torsten needs two balls. Just bump the 14 here. You don't even have to do that. Playing for one. He's going to play the combination for it. I That's said, why not? Sure. <laughs> what, not? what the hell? You don't miss this one time out of a thousand. <laughs> okay. There's your champion. There's our champion, Rec Horsten recognized Hall. or otherwise. Dr. Fedak leads the applause. folks I wanted to take a moment to thank all of our sponsors you see them along the rail there all housing tables Andy cloth Aramid Kamui Kamui helped us with uh, a lot of uh, help here with their giving away a weekly uh, with a weekly pass they gave away a tip free tip obviously uh, inside pool magazine pool and billiard magazine Amsterdam billiards I'd like to thank all of you for showing up of course, without you, we couldn't have made this happen. But obviously, one of the people sitting right beside me, George Fells, who's been with us for the last few days. George, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure both ways, JR. I hope we can do it again. Well, I definitely don't see a problem with that. No. I, I can't wait. I'll, I'll be back next August. Be here, <laughs> and we'll have some fun. <laughs> awesome. Well, folks, we're going to let the stream run. We're going to unplug. You have a pleasant evening. Thank Thanks you very for much for in. bearing with us. We'll see you down the road.